I've uploaded shorts for the last two weeks with the end saying I'll post a carbon roller guide at 3,000 subscribers. So subscribe if you want that out. We're like 120 subscribers away, so we're almost there. Huh? Okay, look, I know it's been two months and so much has happened. Moonlight has played three different majors and one was an invitational to Splatoon World Cup. Did you know that was a thing? Because I didn't. All I know is I played quite a bit of Carbon Roller, but I still haven't gotten this damn Carbon Guide out in all this time. Heck, this is my third rewrite of the intro with a 19-page script. Uh. Alright, alright, here's the damn Carbon Guide. I hope you all enjoy. Carbon Roller is part of the Roller class, obviously. It's the Roller with the least range, but the fastest kill time. This weapon suffers with low paint output and quote unquote low range, but it still has about the same range as Splattershot when it uses vertical flicks. The Carbon Roller's horizontal flick does 100 damage at most, while the vertical flick does 120 damage. The damage values aren't not that great. The horizontal flick one-shots from a little less than a line away, and the vertical flick one-shots from a little bit more than a line. Look, I know that sounds bad, but this is why this is a guide on Carbon Deco. Not the really ass V-Carbon variant. What the fuck? Burst Bombs are what makes this weapon truly great. Burst Bombs do 60 damage on a direct hit, 35 on its closest indirect hit, and 25 damage on its farthest indirect hit. This all makes it pretty great for comboing with Carbon Roller. Got two, got three, got four! Carbon Roller does at least 40 damage on a vertical flick outside of fall off shots. So if you hit a Burst Bomb direct and a vertical flick, it should kill. Side note, you can also use Burst Bombs to quickly and easily paint your feet. All rollers get stuck in enemy ink all the time, so it helps to have a sub-weapon that fixes that issue quickly. Trizuka is an amazing special, it has a humongous AoE that does 53 damage on an indirect and a whopping 220 damage on a direct that can literally kill through spawn armor. The two indirect shots killing also helps when someone rushes your Trizuka since you can shoot the floor close to them twice to save yourself but sometimes you have to predict your opponent's movements just for it to count as a direct since it has to hit on the opponent's point of view. And I hate that. Gear is a huge part to any weapon you play, to Slotlings needing an insane amount of run speed, to Tetras running quick respawn to feed. Carbon Deco is significantly stronger if you wear the right abilities. There are five different parts of this that I would like to focus on. Ninja Squid, Swim Speed, Stealth Jump, Utility Subs, and one sub ability every Carbon Deco player should wear no matter what. Let's start with Ninja Squid. Ninja Squid is a main ability exclusive to shirts that takes away the user's ripple effects when swimming. There have been a few changes to this through the years, like the recent patch that gave the user a few ripples as they start swimming in their ink. Ninja Squid has to be the most used ability on Carbon Roller, and for good reason. Carbon Roller isn't something that'll paint the map, pre-fire areas like shooters, or space weapons out easily. Instead, it bides its time and waits for the perfect moment Oh no! <clears throat> Sharking is a section that I'll cover later, but Ninja Squid makes this much, much easier. You can swap from side to side very easily without your opponent seeing you. And 99% of players can't see Ninja Squid well. Many top players can hear or see the tiny ripples, so keep that in mind. Swim Speed is my favorite ability by far. Why wouldn't you want to make your main movement method faster? Carbon Roller is a lightweight weapon, so it naturally moves faster than other weapons. Incopedia says lightweight weapons have a 5% increase in swim speed, I don't really know how to translate that, but basically it, it moves fast as hell. The sooner you get to a fight or a shark, the more splats you can get. You can also escape fights more easily. Being able to get into fights and leave fights as quick as possible is always a plus. Stealth Jump and Utility Subs are something I would like to put together, but I'm not the best at talking about why these are so strong, since it's more general. I'll do my best though. Stealth Jump means you can get back into the fight quicker. Sort of like Swim Speed. 
There's also a neat thing about having stealth jump on Carbon Roller. People can't see your jump from far away, of course, but if they start swimming towards it... Carbon is one of the few weapons that can jump in and kill a, the opponent before they can retaliate. Be careful though, because there are many ways the opponent can prepare. Utility subs are basically small quality of life subs you can wear. The three utility subs I recommend are one sub of quick super jump, one sub of ink resistance, and one sub of bomb defense sub. Quick super jump makes your jump a tiny bit faster, but what's more important is when you jump you have 22 less vulnerability frames. It will change your life and save you in so many scenarios you never thought possible. Ink resistance helps when you walk or swim through enemy ink. It will take longer for you to take damage from it. It keeps you at 100 HP for a little bit longer. Bomb Defense Up is important for surviving bomb combos from weapons like Slosher and Stamper. Finally, we have the best ability in the world for Carbon. Recently, Burst Bombs had a huge nerf. Burst Bombs used to cost 40% of your ink tank, now it costs 45% of your ink tank. Sadly, it means if you throw two Burst Bombs, you have a measly two flicks. I've run out of ink too many times because of this. The one thing I realized is if you put one sub of Sub Saver, it'll give you three flicks when you throw two Burst Bombs. And it changed everything for me. I'll show a chart on screen comparing the two. If you have the one sub of Burst Bomb and one you don't. If you throw one Burst Bomb, you'll have 14 flicks instead of 13. If you throw two Burst Bombs, you get three flicks instead of two. Try it. Please try it. Please try it. One small footnote, don't use Run Speed, Intensify Action Up, or Respawn Punisher. Run Speed is only good on weapons that strafe a ton, and Carbon Roller does not do that. Intensify action is mainly used for weapons that have jump RNG, but since Carbon doesn't have any jump RNG, it's practically useless. The only thing Intensify action will help you with is squid rolls and squid surges, which didn't really affect me. And don't use Respawn Punisher, since Respawn Punisher is an ability mainly used by weapons that don't die very often, like E-Leader. Carbons be dying quite a few times. These are the builds I've been running recently. My basic Ninja Squid build with basically all the normal stuff. My comeback and haunt build that I used to use pretty often with Tacticooler, but recently I've been leaning towards my full swim speed with quick super jump build. I also have a QR build that I use on some specific map modes or against specific teams. I'd just say experiment with certain builds, and if you're a beginner, I highly recommend starting with the Ninja Squid build. Maps and modes are very important for Carbon since some maps may be amazing, while others may be really bad. Before we get into maps, let's look into each mode available in Chill Season 2023. Please add new modes, Nintendo. In Splat Zones, Carbon has a hard time painting zones since its painting power is so low. It's more important to go for kills to stop the opponents from painting, or you can burst bomb the zone to help cap the zone or stall it. In tower control, always remember how easy it is to flick over the tower to get kills. And be mindful about the height of the tower since you don't want to get stuck under the grating. In Rainmaker, it's really easy sharking out the Rainmaker 90% of the time. Focus on that. High level teams will paint over most places to stop a carbon roller from sharking, so it's okay to go for kills on them instead while they're painting, even if it isn't a kill on the Rainmaker holder. And in Clam Blitz, the only neat tip I'll say is you can shark close to clam piles. Everyone needs clams to win, so why not sit there and just wait for them to come to you? One of the biggest things to note about maps is that you want ledges to flick over, like Mako and Inkblad. And you want maps where you can move back and forth easily, like M Umami Zones. I'll just give a list of the maps on each mode. For slot zones, the best maps are Mako, Inkblot, Flounder, Humpback, Umami, and Shipshape. For Mako, Inkblot, Flounder, and Humpback, it's great because of all the ledges you can flick over. And there are a lot of great places for you to drop zone on people. 
In Dumami, it's a little bit different. I love Umami zones for carbon because you can swap very easily on each side. It makes it very hard for your opponents to keep track of you. The worst maps for your carbon roller in zones are Hammerhead, Mahi, Mincemeat, and Brinewater. These are the worst maps for carbon roller because of a mix of how flat these maps are or how long the zone fights are. Essentially, whenever you have a map where the zone fights are hard, it's just really not ideal for carbon. Tower Control goes along the same road as Flat Zones, with its best maps being Mako, Inkblot, Flounder, and Humpback, with Ludges being amazing for the weapon. The worst maps are usually illegal ones. Most of these other maps are just straight up bad because of how little room there is to move or how large they are. The best Rainmaker maps for Carbon Roller have been Mako, Flounder, and Humpback again with a surprise pick of Scorch. A lot of the Rainmaker maps are just bad because of how damn large they are, or how important it is for weapons to pre-fire, which Carbon cannot do very effectively. Clam Blitz has a lot more maps that I find pretty solid on. Being able to shard Clam Piles makes the game much easier. Make sure you don't tunnel vision too much on it though. Next I'll be talking about simple techniques. Short hops versus full hops, burst bomb combos, aiming down, flicking over ledges, and sharking. When I go for a kill without a burst bomb, I like to short hop because I can land on the ground a bit quicker. It's so I can roll away if I need to. You're most vulnerable in the air. Oh cool, I got a quad. It's so you don't get stuck in enemy ink, which may make it harder for you to aim, or to get away after you get the kill. Burst Bomb combos are where you throw a Burst Bomb into a flick. This combo is the reason Carbon Deco is a strong weapon, while Vanilla Carbon is very weak. Burst Bomb gives you kills that aren't possible without its extra damage. There are a few rules I'd like to note though. Rule 1 is when you go for a close range horizontal flick, do not jump while you do the horizontal flick. This was a thing back in Splatoon 1, but Carbon Roller's horizontal flick in Splatoon 3 is awful. It's inconsistent and it gets worse if you jump. You also don't want to be in the air since you're more vulnerable, like I said before. What the? I'm off. <laughs> Anyways. Rule 2 When you go for a Hail Mary burst bomb into vertical flick in enemy ink, Always move a tiny bit right before you go into squid form, or just use your opponent's corpse to paint your feet. The next one is something I need everyone to start doing immediately. Start aiming down. Look, I know this is crazy, but I've been using this for so long to get more kills more often with even more consistency. Now look at this. I know it makes no sense, but when you aim down, it will do more damage. I don't understand why. My guess is that the vertical flick takes less time to become falloff damage, so it just deals more? I really don't know. All I know is it makes me worry less about if a flick will kill. Flicking over ledges is one of the best things about Carbon Roller. When Carbon Roller flicks over a ledge, it'll kill in one hit close range, two flicks in mid to far range, and three flicks from its maximum range. The thing about ledges is you almost always want to take a fight while under a ledge. It makes it much harder for your opponents to hit you when you're under a ledge, outside of AoE weapons like Blaster and falloff weapons like Sloshers. But 90% of the time you want to fight your opponents while you're under a ledge. I will say be wary of shooter players going for falloff, and I recommend rolling away when you're weak or your opponent is going for falloff. Fun thing I did is I went through every single map in patch 4.1.0 to show what spots I use. It'll give you all an idea of what ledges you should use and shouldn't use. And since I took so long for this carbon guide to come out, I need to update this with four new maps. Anyways, enjoy!
Oh, you all know carbon rollers love sharking. I get way too many multi kills from sharking alone. And here are my three tips for sharking. One, walls. Walls are just fantastic. You can go up them very quickly to get an easy kill on an unexpecting foe, or you can drop down when you see them approach. The thing is, you gotta worry about AoE weapons and bombs. Number two, under ledges. I just showed you a whole compilation of almost every ledge spot you can kill over. Hug those ledges, shark against them, they're just like walls. While there are some you can climb for more space, you can also shark against a wall to get a ledge splat over it whenever someone approaches. The thing is, you gotta worry about AoE weapons and bombs. Number 3, ramps. Man, ramps are so insane, you just become invisible to people on ramps. Many shooters can't reach you easily on ramps. If they accidentally paint over you, you can quickly find different cover through areas they haven't inked while still sharking. The thing is, you still gotta watch out for AoE weapons and bombs. I know many of y'all already understand sharking, but I wanted to help new players and beginners with it, so I made another compilation with almost every sharking spot in the game from 4.1.0, which I also need to update again to add the four new maps because it took so long editing this. Enjoy! Alright, it's time to blaze through a good chunk of the weapons in this game. There are a few categories for kills that I would like to address. Sharking to kill, outspacing, having a faster kill time, burst bomb spam crossfire, and <laughs> just try Zuka. First, I'll say sharking people out will work against literally every weapon in the game. It's the main strength of Carbon Roller. Just be careful of auto bombs, torpedoes, missiles, and other specials that force you to move. For short range shooters like Sploosh, Junior, Aerospray, Splash, Slaughtershot, and Zap and 52, you do have the option to outspace them by doing a burst bomb into a vertical flick, since they can't reach you. 
You can even walk back and spam vertical flicks to still win the fight. It's less consistent against Splash, Splattershot ends up in 52 since they have more range, but he can do this pretty effectively against Sploosh, Junior, and Aerospray. For mid-range shooters like Splattershot Pro, 96, Nautilus, and Squeezer, it's a lot harder to poke like you did with short-range shooters. It's possible to do this while they don't know where you are, but it's usually better to trick them out. I'd also recommend crossfiring with Burst Bomb since you can also help your teammates win their fights by damaging and painting the opponent's feet. The one gun I do not recommend doing a Burst Bomb into Vertical Flick against is Duelist Culture since they can easily react and just roll away from you, making the play useless and leaving you for dead. Speaking of duelies, most of the time it's better for you to wait for the duelies to use all their rolls to attack them, since it's their most vulnerable position. Carbon Roller is also one of the few weapons that can camp a dually jump before they can move. Just flick right before they jump in so the hitbox is in the air when they land. When you fight longer ranged weapons, most of them like to stay on the high ground. This benefits Carbon a ton since you love flicking over ledges. Another great thing about it is your special, Trizuka. Trizuka effectively gives you the range of pretty much an e-leader. So if you see a backline player playing very careless, just try Zooka then. I talked about this a lot when I mentioned sharking spots, but I do not recommend fighting sloshers and blasters when they're over a ledge. The only time you do it is when they aren't shooting at you first. Since they can easily trade with you, or if you miss, they might just kill you before you can kill them. A lot of the time, if you go for the first flick and miss, I recommend rolling away, because if you miss the flick and you roll away, by the time they start shooting at you, the most they'll get is one hit. AoE weapons like Machine and Range Blaster are harder to fight, but you have a much faster kill time than both of them, so focus on that. These are the main matchups I think about when I play Carbon Roller against other top teams, but if you all have any questions, just ask in the comments and I will reply. Who would have thought, Splatoon 3, the team-based game, your Carbon Roller would like good teammates. There are quite a lot of good weapons Carbon Roller likes to play with. It tends to include weapons that can paint the map really well, provide lethal bombs, provide extra range, or combo well with Carbon Roller. The weapons I like to play with are huge painting weapons like Enzap and Junior, and even Nova and Reflux. Enzap mostly gives strong paint output with lethal bombs, and it also helps with crossfire fights and it has a good special with Cooler. Junior gives even more paint and more bombs with much less crossfiring. Nova has a lot of range while painting a ton, but not great at finishing kills, and Reflex paints a ton while providing special support with missiles. I don't recommend running a Reflex right now because missiles aren't great, but that could change very easily. Weapons that can paint while being very good teammates to fight with tend to include stuff like Dually Squelcher, Wiper Deco, Splattershot, Splash 52, and Duelies since they all paint really well and are all slayers as well. It's also very nice that Splattershot and Duelies both provide a lethal bomb with suctions. Combo weapons are pretty great for Carbon Roller. If a 96 gal hits one shot on the opponent, they only have 38 HP left. Almost every part of a flick on Carbon Roller will kill at that point. Sloshing Machine, Slosher, and Range do solid damage too for this, but I don't play with them that very often even though they're pretty solid. Scent has also always been a fun weapon to play with since you can just shark in the shield to get more kills. It's been a classic with me and Shadow since Platoon 2, but we don't really use it often now since there are better options. Carbon Roller has pretty low range, so it's good to have weapons that'll cover the range that Carbon can't reach. The weapons I like to play with that tend to fill this role are Rapid, Nautilus, and Squeezer since they're all solid weapons that cover all of the ranges that Carbon can't while also killing. Finally, I would like to talk about backlines. I'm not a very picky person about backlines, because almost any backline will be fantastic with Carbon. Axel paints well and combos with Carbon, Chargers and E-Leader forces the opponents to hide behind walls, plus they can even paint paths for you. Rapid Pro combos well with Carbon and has a lot of range, even though it doesn't paint very well. Flinza is pure paint. Wallpoint Heavy and Jet Sculpture do a great job crossfiring and fighting while painting pretty damn well, and Pencil which does the same job as Charger while also painting a ton and giving lines to the Carbon. My favorite backlines to play with Carbon Roller tend to be Pencil and Ballpoints. Here's another tier list because, you know, YouTube loves these.
The advanced techniques I tend to use are fall off, which also includes shooting over Brella shields with fall off, and wall flicks, which also includes pillow flicks. First, we'll talk about fall off. When you flick, you'll have ink that'll fall onto the ground. It has a hitbox that gets a bit weaker than usual. This hitbox won't normally kill, but it's good for when you know someone is weak. When no. you hit someone and they swim away, you can predict their movement and flick over a wall to kill them. Wow, that was crazy fall off what? <laughs> be careful though, because when you flick over a ledge, the opponents may be aggressive and try to fight you while you shoot over a ledge. Brella shield fall off is exactly like normal fall off, but against Brella shields. It's not as effective when you're in a 1v1 scenario, but when you're fighting Umbrella with your team, they're more inclined to hold the shield up. That's when you flick over the ledge while your team pressures the shield. Wall flicks are a little more interesting. Do you think Carbon can kill through this? What about this? And this? Carbon can kill through walls. Your hitbox can reach that far when you jump high enough and angle your flick correctly. It'll just kill. You should be creative with this. You can find new things with the game by doing it. I started implementing this with pillows, where you can flick over the wall to just have free fights since your opponent can't fight back. They drop down, they drop down! Whoa, 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 shot, shot, shot! weak. Nice. Dead. There are a few specific things I would like to talk about. One thing is, since Carbon Roller is such a mechanically demanding weapon, if you don't land your kills, you really don't affect your team very often. This will happen to me sometimes when I don't play solo queue or scrim, and then I'll just go into a scrim or a tournament and be like, wow, my Carbon Roller played awful. Of course it did, I didn't practice. Since it's such a mechanically demanding weapon, and it's focusing on killing people, if I'm not well practiced to kill, then I'm not going to do great. So, the thing is, when other players play Carbon Roller, if they aren't landing their kills, they aren't making a massive impact on the enemy team. And that makes it a lot harder to play Carbon Roller in comp. Another thing is your team. Maybe your team isn't playing around you correctly, and there isn't a good way to tell your team how to do it. So, I wanted to talk about that too. Uh, one of the things I realized playing with my old team versus the teams I play with now, my first team was Ascension, where we essentially just went for kills the entire time, which was very fun and I loved that team. But later on I realized that uh, Carbon Roller needs a lot more like support by paint and crossfire, and I learned that through my team on Good Morning when my old teammate Keen constantly painted behind me and threw bombs in front of me. So if you're a Carbon Roller player and you're playing on a team and you want to send them this, here's what I think. Your teammates should be painting around you and in front of you. They should throw bombs around you and, and in front of you. They should also use themselves as bait at some points. Not to the point where they'll die, but to the point where, where they try to bait the opponents to go closer to you, the Carbon player. There are a lot of small things that uh, your team can do better, but the big things are paint around the carbon roller, bomb around the carbon roller, and paint ahead of the carbon roller because a lot of the time, because a lot of the time it can't do that for itself. And if you're the carbon roller playing on that team, one of the biggest things that really pushed me on Moonlight was Shadow making sure that I called out every time I would make a play and calling out if I need help or if I'm leaving. A lot of the time I just jump out because of the QSJ or cooler. So if I need help, I ask for help. If I don't need help, they don't have to come to my rescue for no reason because I won't be there. The more information circulating throughout your team, the better. I think overall, Carbon is just very... It's very hard, but it is very fun. One of the reasons why I'm so focused on making sure you get the kills with Carbon Roller is because you can't really substitute it with anything. If you don't kill someone with shot, you can paint the map, you can throw bombs, you can farm specials. Carbon can't farm specials, it can't crossfire, it can't, well, outside of burst bombs, it can't paint the map. It really only focuses on kills, It's and it's really great at that. It's great at killing, it's great at ratting, it has a lot more potential now because it has an actual special like Trizuka instead of Auto Rush, but it can be really taxing. It can also be rewarding because I, I don't play Carbon Roller just because it's fun, I play Carbon Roller because I think it can lead us to a win. 
What really made me improve was playing V Carbon in S2. I don't know if playing V Carbon specifically was the reason, but playing X Rank and trying and trying every single game really brought my consistency up and I'm not sure if it really brought my peaks up. What really brought my peaks up was playing was playing competitive with Ascension. Right now there are a lot better resources like Sendukyo available, and I highly recommend playing that. And if you feel like you're in a slump, one of the things I did, and still do, is I'll actually watch a lot of players play the weapons I play. That's what I did for SHOT, which is how I started fluxing it. I started watching Melon, and then when I picked up Roller for uh, the Ideal tournament where we beat FT1, I, w I was... I studied the 3000 XP Roller in Japan. I'm trying my best to be that for a lot of the viewers here, and it's pretty hard, but I'll keep trying to push that. Try to see what I do right and what I do wrong. Try to see what other players do right and do wrong. Honestly, the, some of the things JP Carbon players do are just insane, and I'm still learning from just watching that, so try Open Rec. Look out for Splatoon 3 JP streams uh, whenever they're out. If another Carbon Roller places well in a top JP tournament, I'll put the VOD in the description with a timestamp. I'll try and update it whenever I see it. Every Carbon team has something they can fix, of course. There's stuff that I can fix with Moonlight, and Moonlight can fix for me. And usually what I notice for uh, lower level Carbon players is it tends to be communication for what the Carbon Roller player needs, and what the team needs for the Carbon Roller. Car the Carbon Roller needs paint, it needs cross-firing, it needs bombs. And the team needs the Carbon Roller to, you know, finish kills, take attention away from the enemy team. Random multi-kills are also very nice. It's very hard to explain in a small bit of a Carbon Guide, but I'll try to be a good example for all the Carbon players playing in competitive. Heck, maybe the point of this channel is to study me. <laughs>